The next window I'm covering here is the program window. The program window is a direct display of your timeline or sequence down here. This is your playhead. Wherever your playhead exists down here, it's going to show that exact frame right here. And if we, once we're in this window, shift forward jumps us to that window. And now if we hit arrow right, notice it goes through frame by frame on the video down here. And this playhead moves, it, it actually control. this controls your playhead down in your, these are just basically directly synced. You cannot move those out of sync there. This is basically a representation of your timeline. Now here you've gotten the same as your source window. You can kind of zoom up on your timeline here to show it kind of frame by frame, or you can zoom out as well. And then you got all the basic controls down here. You've got add marker. You can add markers and notice it adds it on your timeline. This is directly affecting your timeline here. I'm going to undo. You can actually put endpoints and out points on your timeline. When we get into editing, we'll show why you want to do that. You can do things like three point editing, uh, quite important, but this basically directly reflects your timeline. I'm going to do control shift X, clear that or option X on a Mac. If you have endpoints and out points on your timeline, of course, as you're in your source window, you've got go to endpoint and go to out point. Those shortcuts, shift I, shift O. You can step back one frame at a time, step forward one frame at a time, or you can press play and pause. I pretty much never use these controls because I pretty much always use shortcuts. So I'm going to be using JKL once again up in here to go through my program window. If you hit J, it rewinds. K stops, L goes forward. And if you hit it a bunch of times, J or L, it'll go forward faster or backwards faster. L, 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 K to stop, J, 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 J and goes really fast. Now you've got your lift and extract buttons over here. If you are using endpoints and outpoints on your timeline, you can set an I for an endpoint and an O for an outpoint. And what it's going to do is it's going to lift that portion right out of there and it gets it ready to paste. So if I hit control V, it'll paste that uh, selection that I just lifted out of the timeline. So it's basically like a cut, like when you're cut, copying and pasting. If you extract, what it does is it takes that clip out, holds it in the copy queue, but it also fills the gap for you. So lift basically lifts it out and leaves a gap. The extract it takes it out and fills the gap. But now it keeps it in the paste queue, so you can hit Control V and paste, and there's that clip. Here you've got your export frame. If you click on that, you can save it. You can save a JPEG or a bitmap of the frame that you're on and uh, save it to your computer. You hit Browse and select a location and save it to your computer as a still image. This here is not usually there. This is a this is your toggle proxies. You have to add that usually the default. I'm going to hit this and show you the default. I'm going to hit reset layout, hit OK. That's the default right there. But if you click this button editor, you can grab your proxy, drag it down in here and drop it. Now you have your toggle proxies button. You also have your uh, VR video display option that's been added down here and you can drag and drop that down there as well. And now I'm going to hit OK and that is accessed by hitting this little plus button to get your button, button editor and add your buttons down here. Same as on your source monitor, you have your fit to screen here. You can uh, shrink your, your viewable space there, your video space, and you can zoom up further and you can also hit fit and it will fit the screen. You can zoom way up and zoom up way on the video and you have these little scroll bars here to kind of zoom around the video. If you're doing some compositing, sometimes that can be important. I'm going to hit this and do fit. And over here is important if you're editing some high quality footage. If you pull this down, you can tell it to play at half resolution, quarter resolution. If you're playing 4K footage, sometimes you can put this at quarter resolution and it will speed things up. This time code here is representative of the time code in your timeline where you exist on the timeline. And notice those things are linked there, the exact same thing. Over here is your in and out point duration or your timeline durations. So if you don't have an in point and out point down here on your timeline, it shows the basically the duration of the entire timeline. If I click in here, do an in point, out point, that changes. It's at 12 seconds, 25 frames. And this is a 30 frame per second timeline. Control shift X to clear that and suddenly look at that. It's back to the timeline duration. Over here you got the wrench, open this up and you're going to have a lot of, you're going to have several items uh, that you can display on your program monitor. Like if you're editing multi-camera, this is how you access multi-camera. You can view your alpha mode, if you're your alpha channel, if you're using graphics. Have your playback resolution, which is also the uh, that drop down. Paused resolution is typically at full. And you also have things down here like overlays. You can show your overlays, things like time code that you can bring up under your over, overlay settings. If you hit settings and change and tell it that you want to show time code, then it will show the source time code of the, of the timeline right here like it did with the source monitor. You also have things like your safe margins. If you're doing titles, just like the source monitor, you turn that off and you have other op options. Uh, time ruler numbers, a whole bunch of different other things you can, you can display on your 
program monitor that are helpful. Uh, you also have your little drop down menu here that just basically has a timeline you want to switch between or closing and undocking the panel like you can do on any other window. And that's it. That's really it for the uh, program monitor. And in our next episode, we're finally going to be getting into editing. I'll show you how to basically do endpoints and outpoints and drop them into the timeline and start the editing process.